Hi guys, the next 10 episodes, I will discuss the 10 signs that precede the symptoms of chronic disease. Usually, we have them in quite mild, moderate forms, and it takes quite a long time before they develop into a chronic disease, which is a good thing because then we have time to do something about it, but only when we recognize it. And that is why I'm making those videos so you can recognize those signs and actually do something about it. If you already have a chronic disease and you recognize those signs, well, the same solution applies. So then it is a means to reverse chronic disease. And these signs can also get severe quite quickly. And then we speak of burnout. So it's also an early detection for burnout. So I hope these 10 episodes can help you a lot. You know, those signs are so often overlooked because they are mild, they're not serious enough to go to a doctor, but they do impact the quality of our life a great deal. And moreover, if we do not do anything about it, it can be quite serious, even though when we have those signs every now and then, or those signs are really low level, it doesn't seem serious, but they are because they can develop quickly into those burnout uh, conditions or develop to a form of chronic disease that may take months, but it can also be years and years, but it can also be quite um, fast. So these signs are hard to see on the outside. These signs happen a lot with people that on the outside are crushing it. They seem very successful in many ways, in their career, in their finances, in maybe their marriage, their children. On the outside, everything looks fine. But you see, those signs come from the inside. There can be a lot of sadness. There's a lot of unhappiness, anxiety, depression a lot of fatigue, a lot of overwhelm, a lack of joy in life, a lack of interest. So these are quite serious signs. Now today we're gonna start with emotional weariness. And the basis of emotional weari uh, weariness, well, it is. It seems mental, right? But for all those 10 signs that we're going to discuss, they have a physical basis and a mental basis. And you guessed it, they're quite intertwined, right? So on the physical basis, I just want to say that it is a state of low-grade inflammation. There are so many ways that lead to low-grade inflammation. But that is the physical status that impacts our mental status. So for now, in those 10 signs, I'm going to focus to spotlight the mental underlying problem, because that is really something that often is overlooked and will increase our well-being the moment that we find ways that we can do something about it. And that can be a matter of hours or a matter of days. That may be one quality session that you think about what is going on inside of you, inside your world, or in the outside, 
but it's it is your world. So while it is both a physical thing and a mental thing, uh, I discuss here the mental foundation of emotional weariness. Now, emotional weariness is a process that energy is drained and drained and drained because of our emotions. And there is more energy going out than that we can replenish. And therefore, it is a progressive condition. It's a progressive process. It is a process that you feel as Oh, maybe you hear, you 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 hear in your in your mind, your own words, your own self talk, or maybe you hear hear it while you are saying it to other people. I'm sick and tired of whatever. I'm sick and tired of. That is typical of phrase that you would use when you have an emotional weariness. If you let that go on that is the first thing that we see with burnout that you cannot function anymore at your workplace because everything is too much now what is emotional weariness in those sub signs it is a negative mood a negative emotion a negative outlook on from what perspective you look at it, it is a form of pessimism. And sometimes negative reactions that can be so strong that other people are harmed by it because we let those negative emotions out and project it to, towards other people. Now, sometimes at the workplace, we can cover up, you see, but at home, often our partner or children, they get the full load um, because you just overload. It's too much to keep inside and you have to let it out. And what do you do? You let it out in a safe place with your spouse or your children or the people that you really care for. Also anxious thoughts, maybe even depression. When you ruminate about the past or worry about the future. So everyone has those signs every now and then. The difference is if you can recover, if you have the resilience that when those moments happen, that you can come to your senses and think, oh, hey, maybe I have this negative mood, but actually everything is okay. So it's a moment in time and you can bounce back from it. You can bounce back from negative emotions, from negative mood, from negative reactions, from anxious thoughts, from rumination, or your worry about the future, you can bounce back. If you can bounce back, you are resourceful in resilience. Uh, but if not, and you have those feelings on a continuous basis or really quite often, quite frequently, and you cannot bounce back, then that's emotional weariness you're wearing out you're sick and tired of everything you do not have energy anymore to bounce back right so what is the underlying problem actually there are many underlying problems but there are two main underlying problems and the first one is that we lost the sense of safety and security in our life. When everything is an overwhelm, there's just too much going on, or emotions are too dynamic or too strong, 
then we get a sense of insecurity or unsafety. Now, there may be many factors, external factors, internal factors, leading to personal insecurity and feelings of unsafety. It may be neuroinflammation, like I said, the low-grade inflammation that changes the brain a bit because of the inflammation that really exacerbates anxious feelings or negative moods. It may also be that there are there's too much overwhelm and we we or there's something that makes us really insecure when we have a job loss or a divorce there are external factors that can make us feel insecure and unsafe and when we go in a downward spiral that's also um uh, a, a, a process that we cannot bounce back from. If we cannot bounce back from, then we become emotional wary. It may also be that we have this chronic disease and the outlook doesn't look good. And when the outlook doesn't look good, well, it's quite obvious that we feel insecure about the future that we feel unsafe in our own body. So that's also a way, a, a route towards emotional weariness. If this is you, it is really important to do something about it. To just take a moment and think, hey, this is me. I recognize this. This is not part of life like everyone has a struggle or the idea that life is a struggle in essence no no these are signs these are real signs that we really have to do something about it because if we don't it's a downward spiral we really have to actively go up. Now, the good news is you can go up. Maybe you can do it by yourself, or maybe you need help. If you do need help, don't hesitate and go find that help. If you think you can do it on your own strength, by your own, well, think about how you can do that first of all that you want to do it and secondly how we'll come to a couple of um, ways uh, later on but now let me go to the second um, underlying problem of emotional weariness and that is that we adapt too much to the tribes that we live in. Now, what do I mean with that? Well, we all have tribes. And I call them tribes because this is really an innate um, force that we have inside of us. And that force is that we want to belong to the group, to the tribe. Way long ago, we had to belong to a tribe to be safe. Because together, we're stronger, right? So we want to belong to a group. Now, if we go too far in belonging to a group, we lose ourselves. Because when we are in a group, we want to be like the group, think like the group, act like the group, do like the group, 
please the group. Because that are ways to belong. That are ways to fit in. And we all have a couple of tribes. Our direct family tribe with our spouse, our children. The bigger family tribe with the in-laws and the larger family. We have the tribe of our friends. We have the tribe of, of the work. So when we go too far with complying to the rules, the written and the unwritten rules of the tribe, we lose ourselves. We get confused about who we are because we do things that we innately know is not us. We say things that maybe later on we think, did I really mean that? Do I really believe that? Or we prioritize things that are in favor of others and not ourselves. We adapt our behavior. And bottom line, that's not who we are. So when we are losing ourselves, then everything becomes unsafe, which is really paradoxical because, well, we wanted to belong to be safe in the first place. And when you go too far in adapting to that tribe, it becomes unsafe because we are no longer who we really are. So what is a solution for that? What can we do about that ourselves? Well, first and foremost, it is really knowing who we are and connecting to we, who we really are. Now, when I say that to people, they a lot of people, they, they just go blank and say, but I am who I'm who I truly am. I don't know any other. So what's that thing about being our true self? Well, most of us, most of the day, are not really our true self because we have to adapt to this tribe, but we are just not aware of it. So it starts with self-awareness. And then the big question is, how do I know when I'm truly myself or when I'm that person who adapts to the tribe? Well, when you're calm and satisfied, you can be quite sure that that is who you really are. When you are really happy, when you are passionate, when you're in the flow, when you are in your creative zone, when you are contributing, when you feel really well. That is who you truly are. And therefore, knowing how you feel, becoming aware, having a great self-awareness will help you to be more of your true self more often in the day. There are also other ways, that, to, of course. So one thing that is, well, like panacea for everything is meditation. When you meditate every day for, let's say, 10 to 15 minutes, that is the moment that you center with yourself. Maybe not the full 10, 15 minutes, but at least a couple of minutes. And that's extremely powerful. Reflecting on who am I? What do I want? Being aware in those meditative minutes makes that you be, are more aware during the rest of the day. It helps if you have this mindful uh, state also in the course of the day, 
But well, when we have a busy day, that is for most of us quite difficult. So make sure you have those 10, 15 minutes in the morning so you can uh, have the benefits of it during the day. So that's really centering for yourself. That's the word centering and grounding yourself in who you really are, in your bliss, in your happiness, in your passionate state, in your talents, in your creativity, just feeling vital. The second thing is doing creative work. Because if you're in creative work, well, that is who you are. If you have to do creative work, but it doesn't work, it is really difficult to do, it doesn't flow, of course, you are not centered. You are not your true self. But when the creative work is really going and going, well, that really helps a lot. That really strengthens you being who you really are and not adapting to what others uh, would like to see of you or in you. The third one is very, very, very powerful. And I think that is one that also for the other nine signs will greatly help. And that is using your emotions as your guide. When you feel sad, when you feel anxious, when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel a brain fog, when you feel just unhappy, when you feel that life is a struggle, you don't have to know exactly what you feel. It's only about the quality of your feelings, your negative feelings. If you feel negative feelings or you catch yourself in negative thoughts, that is your guide. That is your sign. Your sign that you are wearing yourself out emotionally. And if you become aware of that and you are in the know that if it goes on and on and on, you big chance are that there they they result in burnout or after a longer period of time in a chronic disease, then you know that it is important to catch yourself in your emotional state and being aware of how you feel and having the intention that it is important to feel well. It's your well-being. So whatever you have to do to course correct, feel better. Just feel a little bit better. You cannot just be happy from a negative state, but you can feel a little bit better. You can pull yourself out of it, lift yourself a little bit emotionally and feel a little bit better. And maybe the next hour, a little bit more. So that are the three things that are really going to help you if you, um, so you can do something yourself about it. Again, if it is, if these, this is, if this is a severe sign for you, emotional weariness, I really like you to consider to get professional help. But every day you can feel the responsibility for your own well-being. And then these three are really going to help you. Meditate in the morning, 10 to 15 minutes. Feel yourself grounded. Immerse yourself in creative work that you like. That also will center yourself. And use your emotion as a guide. And whenever you feel negative thoughts, negative feelings, negative emotions, lift yourself a little to a bit more well-being. And if you do that every day, then every day is improvement. So see you in the next episode. 
If this resonated with you, join me for a free training where I'll explain how you can reverse chronic disease, not by treating the symptoms, but by treating the causes. So you can improve your well-being, shed the impediments, and have a totally different outlook on your life, strategize for your health, and feel sure about your future again. So if you're interested, check the link below and see you there.